As incessant rainfall wreaks havoc across the country, water-induced flood and landslides has affected the supply chain for vegetables. Middlemen have continued to make the most out of the situation as the prices of vegetables have gone up by as much as 200%. At the receiving end are consumers who are having to pay exorbitant prices, while farmers continue to struggle to make much profit from their producers. Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. A meeting of the ruling coalition currently underway in Balwatar, fresh from the Prime Minister's controversial Pritam Singh remarks that has shaken the national politics. Time ticking on Koshi province as a deadline to form a government inches closer. Nepali Congress intensifies works to gain majority. Consumers having to pay exorbitant prices for vegetables as supply chain disrupts due to incessant rainfall across the country. And Nepali under-16 team that won the East Zone Cup arrives home. Team coach says the boys performed better than an associate nation. A meeting of the ruling coalition is currently underway at Prime Minister's official residence in Baluatar. Top brass leaders of the coalition are in the meeting to dwell on the recent political developments, including Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal's controversial remarks, saying that Sardar Pritam Singh had made several rounds of Delhi to ensure his appointment to the post and the demand for resignation by the opposition. The meeting is also expected to dwell on the formation of a new government in Koshi province and the ruling alliance's attempt to ensure the floor test is in their favour. The Assembly of District Presidents of Nepali Congress is to begin in the capital from today. The two-day sessions will dwell on the party's recent role in national politics and active membership and renewal, among others. The meeting is to begin from 12 noon at the party's central office in Saniba and will also discuss on the party's operational aspects and management. Police have arrested Meera Kumari Yadav, the deputy chair of Saptari's Dakneshwari municipality in citizenship scandal. The district police office Sabdari had taken arrest warrant against her from the district court three days ago, following which Yadav had reached the police office accompanied by her supporters and leaders of CPN UMO. Yadav has claimed that she is a Nepali citizen and the allegations on her were baseless. Her husband, meanwhile, who faces similar allegations, is out of contact. A complaint had been made at the district administration office against the couple some four months ago, alleging them of being Indian citizens. However, the plaintiff then took it to the High Court Janakpur, saying that the administration had refused to file the case. The court had issued a mandamus on 19th of May to register the case. According to District Police Office Sabtari, the case has been moved forward and investigation is underway. The Yadav couple has been alleged of being citizens of India coming from Bihar's Supau district and had issued fake citizenship from Sabtari's Aurahi. Nepali Congress Provincial Assembly Party leader for Koshi Province Uddhav Thapa is to stake his claim for the vacant post of the province's chief minister today. Thapa has the backing of Nepali Congress, Sipin Maui Center, Unified Socialist and Janata Samazwadi Party. Earlier, Thapa and his party's alliance partners had dwelt on joining hands with Rashtriya Prasadantra Party. Discussions had intensified among top brass and Thapa has expressed confidence that the alliance will take the party in their favour before the floor test. The ruling alliance has 29 lawmakers from Nepali Congress, 13 from Maui Centre, including the Speaker, 4 from Unified Socialists and 1 from Janata Samazwadi Party. Opposition CPN Yemal has 40 lawmakers and 6 are from Rashtriya Prasadantra Party. Chief Minister Aspirin Thapa needs to take the latter into confidence if he is to clear the floor test and for a stable tenure. Koshi Province Chief had given till 5 p.m. today for aspirants to stake their claims to the post. Courts across the country hand out verdicts on a daily basis following necessary hearings. However, 137,000 individuals that were booked in the past 50 years have not fulfilled court's verdict. The 77 district courts, seven high courts and the special and supreme court in the country hand out almost 100,000 verdicts each year. But the implementation record of these verdicts have been feeble in many cases. The government has not been able to generate 19 billion, 40 million rupees that these courts had fined from guilty parties in the past 50 years. This includes 8 billion, 984 million rupees fine that was slapped by the Kathmandu district court. 
Jail time of 6,000 years have also yet to be served in total, which the Kathmandu District Court says is a challenging task to execute considering the densely populated capital that serves as an easy hideout for most convicts. Around 137,000 that were handed prison terms by all courts are still absconding. The highest number of convicts that are on the run were sentenced by the Kathmandu District Court, followed by Morung, Dhanusha and Chapa. Concerned authorities say lack of human resource, among others, has dented their plans to book the guilty. Although there is a system to provide 30% of the fines as encouragement allowance to the officer and police officials who implement the verdict, a large sum is yet to be collected. The Supreme Court some four months ago began the implementation of a software to keep track of the verdicts. However, the record keeping has been backlogged. This, the concerned officials say, is the reason behind the large number of verdicts that seem to be unimplemented. Fresh from the Jalahari controversy, more irregularities have surfaced as it has been understood that the Pashupati Area Development Trust, PADT, has not been able to collect the rent from shops, buildings and land within its jurisdiction. The historic and religious centre sees a daily transaction of millions of rupees through 148 shops in the premise, including 24 souvenir shops. However, the trust has yet to collect more than 12 million rupees in rent from these vendors. Agreements of many of the vendors have expired since around 15 years and the trust has not collected rent from the dharmashala that is spread in an area of over 9 ropani. 20 years ago, the trust had agreed to rent the space for 51,000 rupees per year. A case is currently pending at the court as the government declared the Nepal-India Maitri Dharmashala as illegitimate, which the trust had rented out some four years ago for 10,542,000 rupees per year rent. The trust has yet to abide by the directive to scrap its agreement with the Dharmashala. The trust has also yet to collect 7,433,000 rupees from the cafe in Tilganga Dharmashala and 22,448,000 rupees from three gutis that are spread out in an area of 1,612,176 square meters. The trust property spreads in an area of 5,561 Ropani land. However, this does not include the land area given to Guti, which is yet to be properly identified. The main coffer of Pashpati has 54 kilograms of gold and 1,325 kilograms of silver. The trust says it managed to collect 664,471,000 rupees in revenue against the target of 920 million for the ongoing fiscal year, while its expenses stand at 561 million rupees. The government has allocated 210 million rupees in the upcoming fiscal year for Pashupatinath. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. The question is why has the Pashupati Area Development Trust failed to protect its own assets? Your options are A. Unclear records, B. Politicization in leadership and C. An excuse for irregularity. The voting is on. Type in EWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The market price of vegetables has skyrocketed in recent days. At a time when the season is about to end, supply has been affected because of incessant rainfall. With the government unaware about the market demand and production, the price has increased from 550 to 200 percent in the period of just one month. The hike in price and role of traders has severely affected farmers and the consumers. The lengthy drought before monsoon and the current incessant rainfall have led to excessive rise in price of vegetables. Price of vegetables have increased by 50 to 200 percent in the last month. Green chilies used to cost 56 rupees on the 3rd of June, but now cost 190 rupees. This is an increase of 235 percent per kilogram. Price of tomatoes has also increased by 205 percent, while that of bitter gourd has increased by 130 rupees, sponge gourd by 46 rupees, and green spinach by 92 percent. If we are to compare the current prices of vegetables with that of last year, there are drastic differences. Ginger, which used to cost 65 rupees per kilogram last year, now costs 310 rupees per kilogram. A total of 1,180,000 kilograms of vegetables were imported at the Kalimati vegetable market in the past 20 days. The government does not have any data on the vegetables consumed across the country in a single day. It is normal for the price of unseasonal vegetables to increase during dry and rainy seasons. However, the current situation has benefited middle persons while the consumers have been compelled to bear the brunt and the farmers have not received appropriate price for their producers. 
In our Public Voice segment, we've asked in several provinces what should be done to ensure the proper management of public transport. Let's take a look at what they had to say. The supply of drinking water from the Milamchi Water Project is to be halted for the ongoing monsoon period despite an investment of 60 million rupees by the Milamchi Drinking Water Development Committee to construct support structures for continuous supply. The committee had halted operation for two weeks since 16th of May to construct support structures to ensure service delivery throughout the year. However, the structure reportedly is inadequate. As a result, residents of Kathmandu will likely receive drinking water only once in 7 to 10 days. The Kathmandu Upatyaka Drinking Water Limited, KUKL, had been supplying water in every one or two days from various sources, including Melamchi. KUKL is currently providing 120 million litres of water daily at the moment. Instagram owner Meta has launched its Threads app, which experts say could attract Twitter users unhappy with recent changes to the platform. The app is now available to download in over 100 countries, including the UK, but not yet in the European Union because of regulatory concerns. Users can create posts of up to 500 characters, and many features are similar to those found on Twitter. But rivals have criticized the amount of data it may collect. Meta calls the new app an initial version with extra features planned, including the ability to interact with people on some other social media apps like Mastodon. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is due to arrive in China as part of high-stakes attempts to rebuild bridges between the world's two biggest economies. It is the second visit to Beijing by a senior Washington official in as many months and comes after the country's relationship nosedived this year. The list of points of contention between the U.S. and China ranges from Taiwan and Ukraine to national security and an ongoing trade dispute. The visit also comes just days after Beijing said it will curb exports of two key materials used to make computer chips. Yellen's recent comments that the two economies can work together could be crucial to the trip, which will include her first talks with China's new vice premier, He Leifeng. Ahead of the visit, the U.S. emphasized the importance for the countries to responsibly take the task. This latest trip to China comes just weeks after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Beijing when he met President Xi Jinping and Foreign Minister Jin Gan. Blinken was the highest-ranking Washington official to visit the Chinese capital in almost half a decade. The Nepali under-16 cricket team that lifted the East Zone Cup for the third time has returned home. The team landed at Trivun International Airport last night. The boys were welcomed at the airport by manager for Cricket Association of Nepal, Khan Binod Das. Nepal's under-16 team had defeated host Malaysia by 221 runs on Tuesday to lift the title. In the match played at Bayumas Oval, a century from Narin Bhatta helped Nepal post 252 runs for the loss of eight wickets in 35 overs. It was the second highest total posted by Nepal at the tournament. 
Butter remained unbeaten at 112 runs from 89 balls. Niraj Kumar Yadav contributed 47 runs for Nepal. In reply, Malaysia could not bat well against Nepali bowlers. Mohamed Akram top scored for the host with 10 runs, while none of the other batters scored in double digits. Abhishek Tiwari was the pick of the Nepali bowlers with five wickets in his six overs, while giving away only seven runs. Santosh Yadav had three wickets, while Sagar Gaire and Ashok Dhami shared a wicket apiece. Nepal had previously been crowned the champions of the tournament organized by ACC as Eastern Region in 2017 and 2019. Upon arrival, team coach Lakpa Lama said that the boys had performed better than an associate nation. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.